involved here. Good evening. I'd like to uh, call the Cape Elizabeth Town Council uh, regular meeting for May 13th, 2013 to order. Uh, Town Clerk, will you please take the roll call, please? Chairman Walsh? Here. Council Guvenali? Here. Council Jordan? Here. Council Ray? Here. Council Sherman? Here. Council Sullivan? Here. And Council Wagner? Here. You all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance Thank to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item is Town Council reports and correspondence. Jessica. I'd like to report on the Library Planning Committee. We had our uh, second meeting on April 30th. Guest speaker was Steve Bogoni, who's the director of the Portland Public Library, oversaw their expansion, also saw the latter part of the Brunswick expansion, and it was absolutely fascinating. And we had a third meeting today. Our next meeting, uh, we're going to be touring, or the plan is to tour Brunswick, Topsom, and Portland. Great. So it's very exciting. Very good. Any other uh, reports? Seeing or hearing none, we'll move to the Finance Committee report. Frank, anything? Nothing to report tonight. Okay. Um, this is now uh, the first opportunity for citizens to discuss items not on the agenda. And seeing no one in the audience to do that, we'll move on to the town manager's report. And uh, you probably received that by email today. And Michael was hoping that he didn't have to read the entire report this evening, but let him highlight those things he wishes to point out to us. I'll do that, but thank you, Jim. First, Deb, do you want to give an update on the hours for the election tomorrow? Sure, be happy. Uh, the school budget vote is tomorrow. The polls are open at 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. at the Cape Elizabeth High School Gymnasium. And, and citizens are actually voting on two things? Uh, there's actually, yes, the school budget itself uh, whether they feel the budget is uh, too high, too low, or just right, uh, and whether to continue the process of the validation vote for the next three years. That would be a yes or no question. And what, well. what does it cost us to conduct this validation vote? Um, it depends on if it is combined with any other elections. If we use the machines, which we're actually not tomorrow, we are hand tallying, uh, it could run upwards of um, five or $6,000, depending if we use the machine, so. Okay, interesting. Okay, Mike. Yeah, uh, thanks, Deborah and Jim. I just wanted to mention the Memorial Day Parade is coming up uh, on Monday the 27th. Uh, it'll be the usual from that end of town to the uh, Veterans Monument over on Scott Day Road. Uh, the parade begins at 9. It'll be an open house at the fire department thereafter. Family Fun Day is coming up again. I did want to congratulate Andy Stein, who's retiring on May 21. Andy is a police sergeant. Uh, who's been with us for 25 years and uh, was the animal, uh, used to have Buster the dog at one point, some people some people have been here for a lot of years, I remember when we had a police dog, uh, but he's been a, you know, just a great asset to the department uh, for, you know, all, all 25 years and uh, he'll be he, sorely missed and look forward to uh, going out to lunch with him on his last day along with the chief and a couple of others. He, he didn't want much fuss upon his retirement. Uh, but uh, we are going to go out to lunch and looking forward to seeing him and uh, wishing him all the best as, as he retires. Uh, I will mention it again next month, but Joan Carrier is also retiring from the library after uh, 18 years. Uh, she'll be retiring at the end of June. Uh, the council had agreed for us to move forward with the Charles Road sewer project. Uh, pleased to report that it came in about $87,000 under budget, which is, which is always good, at least the bid did. So that work began this morning and uh, appreciate everyone's cooperation on Charles Road as that progresses. Uh, the beach parking lot, if you have been down at the park lately, uh, is progressing. It's due to be paved on Wednesday uh, if the weather cooperates and if every other issue cooperates. Uh, so uh, we're hoping to see that done. And just a reminder that that's all done with revenues generated within the park, uh, all of that work. Uh, you might have noticed some clearing of brush by the Fort Williams Chapel Road entrance. Uh, Pleased that Mike Duddy, our tree warden, was able to get a grant through Project Canopy to uh, plant those new trees. And I think it'll be a much you know, better entrance as you progress along Shore Road uh, to the way the park looks rather than looking as you, 
you come that way looks has looked all overgrown and ugly and uh, it's uh, we're slowly trying to improve that whole corridor. David has a question. Uh, since I walk by there almost every day now, I notice that there are more cars parking in that area because there's yeah. more area cleared, and I'm wondering if that is the intent. It looks like there's a sort of a three or four car parking lot there, which I'm not objecting to, but I just yeah. wonder if that's the plan. Not at all, because it's very dangerous to get out of there because of the, the as you come out of there, there's uh, a very high stone uh, precipice uh, wall just beyond there, and you can't see anything coming from uh, the north, uh, from the south. So maybe it's something we ought to address uh, to keep okay. it happen. Yeah, because it definitely, I'm seeing more cars parking there. Yeah, this is uh, pretty regularly. We can, uh, we can post it because there's, a, there's an ordinance that says that we can post any place that uh, is unsafe. Uh, we don't need specifics, so I'll mention that to Public Works and we'll get some signs up there. Uh, Town Center Committee is having its first meeting. The Conservation Commission on May 20th. The Conservation Commission is having public forums on May 30th and June 6th on the update of the Greenbelt Plan. I know the Council has received quite a bit of emails uh, about that particular topic. Uh, building permit notifications, one of your goals. The Planning Board is going to have a public hearing, we believe, on July 16th on that. Uh, you're going to start hearing rumors about a development at the top of Broad Cove Road right as you enter Broad Cove Road on the right, just after you get past the St. Bart's uh, uh, parking lot, uh, Sangamon Associates, which is involved with Eric Chinquette, uh, has, has the, his representatives have met with uh, Maureen, I believe with the board at this point, to look at a 12-unit condominium project uh, in that particular uh, parcel. So that will likely be an application, will likely come in the next month or two for that. and. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some public interest in that. Uh, the canoe storage racks uh, are very popular at Great Pond. We had 81 people apply for the 32 spots. Uh, Short-term rentals, something else the council has worked on. Uh, it's interesting, there's only seven that have come in that have been completed, seven more in process. We believe that there's uh, more out there. So. Uh, it's going to be probably a challenge over the next few months to uh, make sure everyone comes into compliance. We had a successful waste collection day uh, Saturday, over 300 cars. The police collected separately uh, collected prescription drugs. They had over 300 pounds of drugs uh, left off uh, at the police station, about 135 walked in. Uh, you note here it's very good. It looks like we may be recruiting more young people to serve in our fire department. Uh, Ten Cape Elizabeth uh, High School students have agreed to participate in a two-week training program beginning June 17th. We also will be uh, have six South Portland students who have signed up. Uh, we were doing it jointly uh, with the two departments. Uh, so we're providing the space, South Portland's providing most of the training, so that's good. Cape Memory Care, I just want to make you aware it's been busy. Uh, for the rescue, they've been there 26 times since April 1st. Uh, so. Uh, People wondered the impact that new facility might have on our rescue, and 26 calls since April 1st is, is considerable. And a lot of it is, uh, you know, people come in, they, they fall, and just the staff is not allowed to lift them, uh, you know, to protect the workers' comp and other issues, and so they call the rescue, and uh, it's been quite busy. Uh, the library has been busy hosting programs. They have 80 programs scheduled for the month of May. Code enforcement officer is very busy with inspections, uh, 26 just last week alone. I think that shows the market uh, picking up in terms of people, some, you know, this construction over at Eastman Meadows, and the market's also picking up with renovations and, you know, people doing different things to their homes. So uh, we're still dealing with the Coast Guard on the lens uh, up front. Uh, interesting. Uh, the Cape Preservation Society wants to celebrate Cape Elizabeth's 250th anniversary coming up in 2015, and I think there'll be a proposal on your agenda next month to establish a committee uh, that will come up with ideas and solicit public I solicit ideas and figure out what to do for the 250th celebration of Cape Elizabeth from 1765. Uh, other than that, taxes are coming in. And just finally, I wanted to congratulate Darren Brown and Josh Dennison. Uh, as you might have seen in the news, they placed first in the Cumberland County snowplow 
rodeo, and I didn't attend it this year. It was over, over by the airport, I believe, and uh, out by the end of the runway there, by the turnpike offices. But uh, what this is is they drive trucks around. They have they put up these mailboxes and they put up cones, and <laughs> and you 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 have to move with certain areas without knocking over the cones or knocking over the mailboxes. And so you know, for there are about 20 teams. So for us to come in first, Public Works was particularly proud of that, and. They're competing, I think it's June 6th up in Skowhegan in the, the state competition, so we'll see how we do there. But there's, there's a lot going on, grass is growing, uh, and uh, it's, it's a busy time, so thank you. Thank you. Michael, any questions for Michael on his report? Yes. Um, Frank. Mike, can, can you uh, remind us what the implications are for folks regarding short-term rental for folks who fail to register with us and we discover that they are indeed I, there's huge I don't remember the specifics but there's huge fines in the, uh, the in the ordinance of you know so much per day for not doing it and uh, you know it's uh, you know a lot most folks should be aware of it they, they got a lot of emails from folks that were, who were asking them to take certain positions on it right, right. so uh, I think you know ignorance of the law uh, is, is going to be a lame excuse uh, but anyway, we'll see how it you know evolves. And, you know, some of them. Yeah, you know, our worry is that you know they're going to be renting in August. And everyone's going to come in on August first, trying to get a permit for the next two weeks, and then they'll discover that there was some requirement that they didn't meet. You know, particularly some of the life safety pieces, and then they'll be all, all upset because they've rented it out. And how can the town stop me? And it's uh, yeah, could be a challenging few weeks. Yeah. Any other questions? Just did you like the written report in advance? Is that okay? Yeah, I, I like the written report, and I was frankly amazed at how much uh, stuff was going on uh, in Cape Elizabeth that, that the town government was involved in. So I want to thank you and your staff for uh, doing all of that and doing such a great job. Well, I think the, uh, the council should take a little bit of credit for that, too, because part of the conversation Michael and I had during his uh, year, year review was about trying to, to sort of fill this out, this, this manager report in a way that gives us a little more detail on the things that are happening. Because there's a lot of dynamic opportunities here in town that we don't hear about, or we hear about it after the fact. But what you have there is a, a pretty uh, robust uh, schedule and, uh, and some, some really meaningful things that, uh, like the couple of retirements that are uh, coming up shortly. And, and on that same point, Jim, one of the council goals is to work, the council goals is to work with the town manager to make citizens better aware of the services provided by each municipal department. Yeah. And we had a long discussion at the department head meeting today about different ways that, that we can do this, opportunities. And, and also, you know, we struggled a bit on the why are we doing it? You know, is it just to, you know, the point is that they're paying for these services, they ought to know about them and uh, evaluate, uh, you know, uh, the value. It's, it's not to do a sales job, it's to, hmm. it's to uh, make sure everyone's aware of what they're paying for and what's available to them. Thank you. Good. Okay, um, the uh, next order of business um, is to review of the minutes. Their first set of minutes are April 8th, 2013. I hear a motion. Yes, just I move we approve the April 8th, 2013 <coughs> minutes. Do I get a second? Second. second. David, thank you. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. The second set of minutes would be April 11th, 2013. I have a motion. Move David. to approve. Seconded. Jessica, any discussion on the 11th? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? It's approved unanimously. And the third set of minutes would be April 29th, 2013. Do I have a motion? Go to this side of the table. Jamie? Move to approve. And do I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you, Frank. Do you have any discussion on the 29th? No. All those in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> Thank you very much. We move to the first item on today's agenda. That's item 79, and that is the in by the C annual license renewal. Do I have a motion? David. Uh, I move that we approve the annual renewal of the Malt, Venice, and Spirituous licenses and the special amusement permit for the Inn by the Sea LLC at 40 Bowery Beach Road. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Kathy, thank you. Any discussion? 
You know, we, yes. we usually ask, I believe, the town manager if there have been any police complaints or that sort of thing relating to the liquor license. No. Okay. Okay. No. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. And we move to the next item on the agenda, number 80. That's the uh, approval of the local buzz annual license and renewal. Jamie. I'll be recusing myself from the discussion or voting on this, but Don is here to speak with you. If you okay. Need. So we usually take that as a motion. Mm -hmm. um, Jessica, would you like to make a motion? Yes, I move that we accept Council Wagner's recusal from the vote <coughs> and voting on item 80-213, local buzz annual license renewals. And do I have a second? Second. Second, Frank. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, it's unanimous. Jamie, we would ask you if you would step down from the dais, down to the floor. Thank you. <laughs> it's a nice way to say you have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, the motion uh, that is uh, item number 80. We have the, uh, do we have uh, a motion on this at this point? No, we just took his motion. So I need a motion for approval of the local buzz annual license renewal. Jessica? I move that we approve the local buzz annual license renewal, um, the annual renewal of malt, venice, and spiritus licenses, and the special amusement permit for the Cape Cafe LLC the local buzz at 327 Ocean House Road. Do I have a second? Frank, thank you. Do you have any discussion? Any uh, complaints? No, we, we did discuss both of these at the department head meeting uh, with all the department heads, and there were no concerns on this or the previous one. OK. Uh, did we want to ask uh, the manager if she wanted to make a comment or two or not? Doesn't We, appreciate, we appreciated you coming this evening. Thank that you have to open up at 7 in the morning, whatever, so it's, you know, 6.30. 30. There you go. <laughs> so, okay. Um, any further discussion? No? All those in favor? And it is unanimous. Moving on to item 81. You can now join us again, Jamie. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for coming. Thanks. Do I have a motion for the Appointments Committee recommendation? Jessica? Yes. Um, before I'd like... Uh, well, let me I'll go ahead. Um, I move that we approve item 81, appointments committee recommendation <clears throat> of uh, the un an unexpired term on the Conservation Commission to expire December 31st, 2013, and we have uh, voted to nominate Jim Tassie of 30 Cliff Avenue. Do I have a second? second. Yes. Okay. Second, Frank. Do I have any uh, discussion? Yes, yes. I, as always, it's, it's a tough decision because we continue to have outstanding applicants and we hope that all those who were not chosen keep the website in mind because there will likely be upcoming vacancies here and there. We'd love to see them again. Okay. Any other comments from other members of the Appointments Committee? Jamie? Yes. Yeah, I just second what Jessica had to say. We were extremely impressed by all the applicants and really appreciate their interest. That's great. Anything else, Frank? Same thing, and, and it's uh, stunning, really, the qual qualifications people have for these appointments, and uh, mm -hmm. it says a lot about the town and, and people's interest in supporting the town. Good. Anything else? You might as well agree. I was say, what the heck? Not very much more. I she wasn't say. impressed. It was, okay. No, I, I wasn't impressed at all. I <laughs> yeah, okay. So we'll let the let the record reflect that, that Caitlin Jordan was was unimpressed with the comments you all just made. She <laughs> make her own comments. Good. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, again, it is, uh, it is uh, incredible in a community like this that we do get the kind of time and talent out of folks to make it a better place to live. Um, any further comments? Discussion? No. And I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of the appointment? It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Item number 82, the Voter Registration Appeals Board. Well, I have a recommend. I, have a, well, I guess we'll ask Deb. Or you want to give a little background? Yeah, sure. background. Um, state law requires a registration appeals <clears throat> board uh, that is in place in each community in Maine if there is a voter in your community that wants to appeal the decision of the registrar of voters. Um, there's been some sort of appeals board in place for many, many years. Um, currently, the board consists of three members and two alternates. 
Uh, one of the members is appointed by the town clerk, which we did three years ago, and that's a four-year appointment. David Backer serves as the chair of the Registration Appeals Board, uh, very ably, I may add. So in the event we ever did have an appeal to the board, um, David would, would chair that until next year, until 2014. Currently before you tonight are the uh, alternates <coughs> and members nominated by the Town Democratic Committee and Republican Town Committee. And these are three-year appointments. I apologize for the uh, error in the, uh, in the packet that you have. These terms will be effective immediately for a term to expire May 13, 2016. Democratic Town Committee has nominated Nolan Reichel? Reichel. 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 Yeah. One Rockcrest Drive, an alternate Karen Hessel of 45 Wildwood Drive. The Republican Town Committee has nominated Martin Sheehan <coughs> of Star Road, an alternate Janet Staples of 27 Trendy Road. So do I hear a motion? Jamie? Move that we approve the, uh, the nominations as stated in item 82 2013. Okay, and, and with the amendment that these uh, terms expire May 13, 2016. Do I have a second? Second. David, thank you. Do you have any discussion? No? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor? Oh, Jamie, you wanted to say something. Sorry. I was just going to say kind things about both Nolan and Karen that I know well from uh, the Democratic Town Committee and that they're very able additions to the, the board. Okay. Could I just ask a yes, question? Just I'm curious if, if they're the same day voter registration, correct? Yes. Okay. So if somebody uh, were denied of the right to register to vote on the day of an election, would that board be able to handle an appeal so that that person could vote that very day? Wouldn't they vote and then? It would probably be a challenge ballot at that Yeah, that's. Yeah. So what does that mean? <laughs> the, the ballot would be challenged, and then if, and if there are any questions about the registration or what have you afterwards, then the, the uh, voter appeals board would meet. Um, if there was if the only time a challenge ballot comes into play is if there's a recount. So the person gets to cast their vote, and that would, it would be dealt with after the yes, fact. Yes, exactly. Okay. In my 27 years now, we've never had to go to the appeals board. I, I think that because of um, the laws in effect right now um, for voter registration, and frankly, making it very easy in Maine to do so, including same-day registration, um, most folks have the time to, to get their proof of identity and residency to be able to uh, register to vote. We really don't have a lot of problems with that. I think other states may have a little more problems than we do, but with the same-day folks really are up on what they need to do. We really try to keep folks informed, particularly as we um, get close to an election cycle of, of what they'll need. We take advertisements in the newspapers here at Town Hall, the website, really try to get that information out so folks don't get denied and, and so forth. So. Good. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you. Moving on to item number 83. And that is a miniature golf request in a, in a business a BA zone. Um, do I have a motion? Caitlin, I think a motion. I think it's my first one in my term. Um, I move that we move item 83-2013 miniature golf request in the BA zone to be reviewed by the planning board. Do I have a second? Second by Jamie. Thank you. You have any discussion, questions? Yes, David. I think that the planning board has a lot to do, uh, and there's a lot on the planning board's plate. So before I refer something like this to the planning board, I just want to gauge whether there might be support among the council for such a, a, an amendment. And uh, realistically, I just don't see this. Um, gaining much traction in Cape Elizabeth. And I understand the applicant is here, uh, and I, I hope I'm not offending him, but I just, I don't, I just don't see it. Um, this could potentially be in a, an area of town that is near resident, residences. Um, the town has been fairly resistant to um, certain types of commercial activity, and I just wouldn't want to send something to the planning board that I think would take up a lot of time and have rather dim prospects for success. 
Uh, but if, if there is enough people in the council that realistically think this change could come about, then I'm all, you know, I'd be all for sending it along. I just, I don't see it. Any other thoughts? Jamie? I mean, I'm, I'm open to hearing what Carl has to say about what his vision is for the uh, miniature golf course and uh, where exactly he would conceive of it being. I mean, I'm, I'm open to hearing it and seeing whether it should go onto the planning board. Anyone else? Well, I mean, I, I agree with David. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I have this, um, this feeling that we send these things to the planning board while we think we're doing, you know, either the citizen request or ourselves justice by putting it through a public process. I just wonder about the wisdom of sending something like this that, that at least on the surface from my perspective, is dead on arrival. I mean, it just, it, you know, I mean, today, I mean, this thing wasn't alive for what, you know, tonight's meeting and we got, you know, we got one letter from a neighbor and when everybody finds out it's happening, we're going to have exactly the same thing happen. So I, I just wonder about, you know, taking up valuable planning board time. And again, I'm all for public process, but I just, you know, I just cannot imagine a miniature golf course on Ocean House Road in Cape Elizabeth. I just, it just is far and beyond anything I could imagine. Kaylin. Well, I, I also agree with Jamie that we should listen to what Carl has to say, but at the same time, and the, all the years that I've been on the council, all of three now, every year our goal has been to be more business friendly, try and find <clears> a way to bring more business into Cape Elizabeth. And Carl's doing just that over there at his new Cape Co-op. And so the planning board is exactly where an idea like this goes and gets vetted out. And they are going to, Carl's going to have to jump through all of the hoops that the planning board is going to put him through. What's it going to look like? What are the details going to be? How's it going to be laid out? What's the grass color going to be? I'm sure that's all going to be vetted through the planning board. That's why we have a planning board for them to decide and find all the details and then send it back to us. Anyone else? If I could, I mean, I certainly would welcome the comments from uh, the applicant to see what he has in mind. I think we have to balance what Caitlin just said with the abutters who might be affected by this. This sort of thing can create a lot of stress among people who might live near such a business. And so even though we're just saying, hey, let the planning board deal with it and come up with a potential way to incorporate this use into the ordinance, it, if the council in the beginning really can't quite see it. I don't know why we would put people through that stress and put the planning board through the work when we've, we've sent a lot of items to the planning board already. But again, I'd be happy okay. to hear from Anyone the else? Applicant. Frank? I, I have a basic question. Um, is this a permitted use in this area? And what would, the, would it require a variance? Do we even know that? I mean, it's the same thought. That's, I guess, well, I mean, that, is, is it a permitted use? If it is, then I guess that would Go ahead. Michael. Well, I, I believe it's here because the code enforcement officer has informed uh, the person who's been doing this that it's not a permitted use in the VA zone. Any other questions? No, no. I think we should. Be. So, um, uh, Kathy or Jessica, before I ask Mr. Dietrich to come up and speak, no? Sir, if you'd like to address us, please. Thanks for your time. Just like three minutes. Carl Dietrich, I live at 500 Ocean House Road. Um, you, the concept of miniature golf all of a sudden becomes Myrtle Beach or Hampton Beach. What I'm proposing is, and Kettle Cove Ice Cream is right there, and that's very busy. I'm looking for an um, ocean-themed, nature-based miniature golf, nine holes, 50 by 50. There'll be no lights, music, windmills, any cartoon animals, it'll just be all natural, um, and it's going to be in a 50 by 50 area. Um, the things that are permitted in this area, in the BA zone, that we could do is one is a gas station. We could also do boat repair, which includes sanding of fiberglass and wood, or we could put in a windmill. And my feeling is every day is not a beach day. Um, and we've built the Cape Co-op, 
and people seem to be very happy with it. It's something for, it's all people from Cape Elizabeth, and it would be a Cape Elizabeth, just another, another thing for people to do. Um, groups could do it. The, the town council could have their day at the, at the Cape Putt-Putt Club. It's not what you're, th there'll be no plastic at all. It'll be all hedged and, and beautiful. Um, and I'm proposing, this is a side shot, that 5% of all my gross profits would go to my favorite group, the Cape Historical Society. And it'd be in a 50-50, about the size of this room. Carl, where, where would it be at the... If you look at the, the new Cape Co-op with our seven businesses there, um, it's in the yard right there. And there's uh, ample parking, there'll be um, bushes, and, and it's gonna be built by, if you know the town allows me, by also a Cape resident who um, is a professional, it's more like a putting green. Um, he does professional putting greens for, I wanna say the well-to-do, there's probably 10 or 12 of them in Cape Elizabeth. If you can afford it, you can have a beautiful putting green put in by his company. Frank? Um, will it require an expansion of the parking area there? No, we have, um, we, we, we made more parking, um, and then there's, it's uh, just under two acres of land there, and we have, um, I haven't counted all the spaces possible, but there's, there's many spaces. Go ahead. I, I just want to clarify that uh, Mr. Diedrich is saying what he would do. The, the proposal before the council is to refer this to the planning board. There are no standards yet of, of what a miniature golf course could be. That is something that would need to be developed. And, it, and it, if this was to happen, uh, it would not only apply to Mr. Diedrich's property, it would be to anything in the BA zone uh, as well. Okay. Any questions, Caitlin? So <coughs> in the BA zone, it's not a permitted use under all the uses that gets listed, but that merely because, as you guys have expressed today, you just didn't think a miniature golf course would happen in Cape Elizabeth. I mean, if somebody it, thought it was possible, it might have got put on the list. And that's there's only about 15 things in the BA zone. That's saying, that's and what so, what I'm asking is just that we take a look at whether or not this could be a permitted use. Any other questions? Yes, Jessica. Well, when there is not a when when there is not a permitted use or an, an entity or an individual is denied for lack of permitted use by the code enforcement officer, is this, is this the appeal redress process coming before the council? Well, I, I mean, according to Mark, Mike, yes, I, it is. Yeah, you know, no one is questioning the interpretation of the code enforcement officer. I think all the parties agree that if it's not a specifically listed use, it's not a permitted use. So that, that's not, not what's at question. What's at question is, you know, is the, is, that's before the council, it is the proper place uh, to, to go in order to try to amend the ordinance. Uh, there's two ways to try to amend the ordinances. One is specifically to uh, uh, just come to the council, which is the route we usually go. There's also a requirement that you could require that someone, if they wanted to amend the ordinances, could do it by a petition procedure that's in the town charter. So it's not an appeal. It's just a request now for us to forward this to the planning board for the, to right. explore the possibility of amending the ordinance. Right. So are we ready to take a vote on this? Yeah, I'll just say one more thing. Yeah. I think at this position, you know, before, before anything gets decided and he hasn't even fully fleshed out his plans yet, I think it's appropriate to send it to the planning board and you don't quash it in its infancy before you give it a, a light of day. Yeah, David? And I, I would generally agree with you, Jamie, and I, I sort of appreciate Caitlin's sentiment. I, I just don't see this as having a realistic shot of success in the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, certainly what Carl has described sounds very inviting, uh, but that would apply to the BA zones that are in not only where Mr. Dietrich is proposing, but also over by uh, Tara and the cookie jar, that area. Um, and I'm, am I thinking of missing any others? The, the, big, the big BA zone is, is, that's still out there is the part from the end by the sea to the entrance to Crescent 
Beach State Park. Right. That whole field is so, uh, zone BA. Certainly on the next issue that comes up, I'm going to be That's a BB zone, but hmm? that's, a, that's the BB zone. But very right. similar. Right. Yeah. But, you know, there are seven of us, so but our, however the vote right. comes out, it comes out. Okay. Caitlin? Just to clarify, but the planning board would set the standards, you're saying, correct? Like, if they chose to make this a permitted use, the standards... They would recommend they, them. Right, exactly. They, they, they would, would recommend back standards to us. such as... You know, you can only have a miniature golf course if it's done this way on a lot of two acres or more or something. So, you know, it's not going to get crammed into places that you, you might not want it to later. They, this is their job to come up with this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, all those in favor of moving this miniature golf request to the planning board for its review? All those opposed? 4 3. It's defeated. 3 4. Right. So, thank you, sir. The next item is number 84 day camps. I have a motion. Yes, David. Yes, I move that we uh, refer the proposed amendments concerning day camps uh, as referred to us by the planning board to the ordinance committee. Do I have a second? Yes, a second. Thank you. Any discussion? I don't know if I should also amend my motion to include that it be set for a public hearing, assuming the ordinance committee refers it back to the council, that it set, be set for a public hearing on the council on June 10 at 7 p.m. And the reason for that is that if we are going to make this change, that we try to do so before the summer months hit us. When these, this is typically when these day camps occur. So if I could amend my motion to include that. And uh, is it sec is a second in agreement? Jessica? Yes. Any discussion about this? <coughs> I, the the um, amendment for day camp includes the words to no more than four hours a day. I was, I was wondering if anybody knows anything more about that limitation. The, uh, go ahead, David. Uh, my understanding is that was a rec recommendation of the planning board to limit it to no more than four hours per day or no more than six children per session. Uh, I'm not sure I necessarily agree with those limitations, but that's something that we would take up. I'd be certainly willing to take up at the ordinance committee level. Um, I just don't know if that contradicts with what certain day camps are doing right now. I don't know. My, my understanding is they typically go in the morning hours, but yeah. that's something we can find out. Any further questions, concerns? Okay, I'll take a vote. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you. Item number 87. This will be the renewal of lease for building 326 at Fort Williams Park. I don't know if Michael wants to update us on this or like we're break. Skip, 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 skip. Oh, so, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I missed that. Item 85. That's what happens when you have a touch screen. It moved. <laughs> uh, proposed amendments to the subdivision ordinance. I have a motion. Yes, Kathy. I move that um, we um, that the ordinance committee that the proposed amendments be set forth for public hearing on Monday, June tenth, two thousand thirteen, at seven p.m. Seconded. I'll second. Jessica, any thoughts? This was uh, one of your important issues, David. Yeah. Let this, get, <laughs> let this get cleaned I'd up. I'd be happy to defer to the chair if uh, she'd like to. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, we're called on. Uh, the, uh, what the planning board did was review the subdivision ordinance and uh, essentially make it compliant or uh, in conformity with a state statute on subdivisions in the state of Maine. So uh, as we discussed with the town planner at our last meeting, uh, there were re really no substantive changes. This was just a way, it was more tweaking the language to make it uh, conform to state law and also to make the ordinance more user friendly. If you spend any time with the ordinance, if you've seen the, the new draft, the table of contents is a lot more logical. It's just a lot easier to find things. So, again, nothing really substantive. It was more just uh, tweaking of the ordinance. Okay. Kathy, anything? 
No, um, he's right, and um, the the uh, they did a wonderful job at reviewing this. I mean, piece by piece, letter mm -hmm. by letter, um, and. It's more user friendly for the average person who may look up the ordinance to see what it is and yeah. you know, what they have to do to comply. So um, that seemed to be one of the, the crux of the whole uh, change. Good. Any other comments? Any discussion? Further discussion? All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you. 86. The proposed amendments to related to the responsibilities of the Conservation Commission. As background anyone Michael is there any comment you want to make about this before we uh, no I, th I think the important thing is the ordinance committee voted three to nothing to recommend this to the council for consideration okay do I have a motion Kathy okay um, I move that we um, let's see I'm trying to see what I'm supposed to say here. Uh, the, again, that this goes to a public hearing for June 10th, um, that the amendments, um, that the responsibility of the Conservation Commission have been changed according to the recommendations by the POSP Committee. Do I have a second? David, second. All those, in, any questions, any concerns here? Again, this goes along with the FOSS recommendations, which again is a thank you for all of those, those individuals who worked on that committee and to the Ordinance Committee. Uh, any questions, concerns, discussion? All those in favor? It is unanimous, thank you. And now number 87, the renewal of the lease for building 326 at Fort Williams Park. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve the lease at uh, Fort Williams. Seconded. Jamie, thank you. Any comments? Just want to thank Greg for working with Behavioral Health Resources and thank the tenant. Any questions for anyone? Hearing none. All those in favor of renewal of this lease? It is unanimous. Thank you. Item 88, the Shore Road Sidewalk Estimate. Uh, do I have a motion? David? Uh, yes, in accordance with the uh, Town Council's goals for 2013, I move that we allocate $107,000 from the, oh gosh. Unallocated. Unallocated funds to uh, construct the uh, extension of the shore road pathway between the two entrances at Fort Williams, as well as that section along uh, between Cottage Lane and Surf Road, so that we would have a link uh, from uh, one end of Cape Elizabeth on Shaw Road, essentially, to the other. Do I have a second? Second, Frank. Do we have any any uh, conversation, discussion? Any comments from you, Michael, relative to this? Frank? I guess is, is the bid in the range that you were anticipating? We, we don't have a bid yet. This is an engineer's estimate. Oh, okay. And what's, what would the process be for sending this out to the bid? We're, we're, as soon as the council approves this, we'll... It's, it's already been designed. We'll ask the uh, consulting engineer to, to finish the <coughs> bid specifications. We'll issue a request for proposals. We'll get bids, and uh, the hope would be it'd be constructed this fall. Is, it, is this estimate within the ballpark of what you think? I, yeah, yeah um, I, you know, until I saw the estimate, I really didn't know. But yeah, it was, I was thinking about 100,000. So Michael, uh, just for the record, um, having lived on Wood Road and having tried to cross Shore Road at the bottom of Wood Road, you know where that little rise comes up down? At the top of the hill. At the top of the hill. The sidewalk is from Wood Road on the other side of Shore Road down to where the post yeah. office was. Yeah. So you can cross in that well, section. Th th there's a cr yeah, there's a crosswalk down right near the old post office. Right. But we, we would not want one up closer to Wood Road because as people come over that hill, yeah, they wouldn't see anyone. Yeah. But uh, there back is. in around 1970, there was a very bad accident there. Okay. Uh, so there is a sidewalk as part of this proposal that's going to be built from it's, Wood Road down? There's nothing on the Wood Road side. There'll be a full sidewalk on the shore side of Shore Road. Okay. So people coming out of Wood Road will still have to walk, they'll either cross or walk down to the post office and pick up the crosswalk. So there is no sidewalk prepared for that side? 
not current, which has been none designed. Okay. This is all on the one side of Shore Road. Okay. Yes, Kat. My only concern, and basically it goes off of your whole conversation you just had, is maybe I just thought I missed it, but I haven't seen any drawings, engineer ideas, maps, concepts of what this is going to look like, and so I'm just a little hesitant to sign over $107,000 with having no idea what is really planned to be done with it. Yeah. I, I, you know, we, we have plans. Uh, you know, the, the intent between the two Fort Williams entrances is to have it exactly similar to the rest of the Shore Road pathway. It, it's, it would be a five-foot paved path with a separation between it and the road. Uh, you know, it goes up around uh, that curve. Uh, and, but then when it gets down to the area uh, by Shore Road, by the, between Cottage and uh, Surf Road, it'll match the existing sidewalks in that area. Uh, they, you know, it'll be right up, it'll be a raised sidewalk uh, right, right along there approximately. it would be the same width five. You know, it could be a little bit wider because I think those sidewalks there are a little bit wider. But it, it's to match the existing. Any other questions? So all those, all the background material is available for someone like Caitlin to yep. look at. Happy to share the plans. Okay. When maybe we'll, you know, I'll see yeah, if I can get an electronic copy. We'll post them on the website for anyone to look at. Okay. It really wouldn't matter at that point because I've already had to vote to spend the money or not. So whether or not. Yeah. I was just, good. I was just trying to turn. Oh, I understand. I'm just yeah. saying, you know. You could move the table. That Hold it all up if everybody else is. I mean, the, the, I mean, I certainly appreciate where Caitlin's coming from, but I, I guess based on all of our conversations, I was under the impression that it would be very comparable to the Shore Road pathway as built mm -hmm. between the two entrances. And I, I've, having walked that a number of times and heard from a number of citizens, I, I do think it's important to have that link. Uh, it, it just doesn't make any sense to, to not have that link when so many people <coughs> are running, walking, and biking, younger kids especially on that pathway, it doesn't make sense to me to not, to not have that link. Um, so I'm comfortable voting for this tonight, uh, I, just because I don't think it's uh, anything that's diff very different from what we've already seen, and, and the rest of it is just in keeping with the existing sidewalks. Jessica? Yeah, I agree with Dave, plus that, that curve between the two entrances is really dangerous, and so, you know, and I, I I certainly have the impression that in the past we've talked about this when we've talked about the shore road path and all that, so I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm, I just want to be clear, I'm not objecting to extending the pathway and making it yeah, safer. I'm oh, just I, objecting I to the fact that we're basically being asked to allocate $107,000 and have gotten, I mean, when we did the shore road pathway, there was maps and designs and it seemed like endless amounts of, of information and here I was just shocked that you know, you're being asked to already allocate the money, no bids have gone out, nothing's concrete, and we're just sending it without having seen one map. I'm just expressing that concern, that's all. You Is know, it, if, if you'd like, you can approve this. We'll go out to bid, and you can ask that the bids come back to you, and you can look at the plans if that that's what the council wishes to do. Does anyone else feel the same way Caitlin does about this? I guess conceptually, I see where Caitlin's coming from, but on the flip side of it, I think the way the path was constructed and um, designed and constructed was, came out much better than I thought it would come out, and I could have imagined it would come out, I'd say, and as long as it's consistent with that, uh, I would have no problem with it, and I assume it will be consistent. Mm -hmm. And is there, uh, is there any feeling that we should amend this this motion to include what Michael just suggested, that the bids come back here? I, I'm just asking I, for the will of the group. That's I'm just not sure I understand what he means. So if we, if we pass this motion, the bids come back, do we have to reapprove the expenditure of the funds when the bids come back? We do whatever the council wishes to do, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it's, I'm just, I'm just, my, my job is to give you alternatives to consider. I mean, I, I don't mind doing that. I, I don't see the need, but I'm, uh, if there's enough folks who want to do it, I'm happy to amend my motion. Caitlin, I mean, would, would that give you some 
I mean, you have a right to ask the question, and I think it's a legitimate one. But is that a way for us to? It just to me, it just seemed. I mean, I'm fine either way we proceed. I'm just expressing that it just seems strange that we did it one way for like the Charles Road sewer issue. We just approved that because the bid came back, and we approved the expenditure of the, the money. That was just last meeting or the meeting right. before it went. And they were just doing it differently, and I just felt that, you know, the consistency wasn't there, and I just wanted to express that. So, either way, the shore road pathway is going to be extended and completed. I'm just saying, for future knowledge, we are a little inconsistent here. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, Caitlin, I appreciate her point. The, the, for the most part, the consistency is, is that we don't share all of the plans and the details. Uh, on, on all the different projects, you know, uh, they're always available to anyone who wants to see them. But usually, you know, we, we do rely on the consulting engineers, Bob Malley, Maureen, if it's in planning. Uh, you know, I think that the short road pathway is definitely an exception because it uh, was so controversial and it was so, it was so, it, it affected so many individual properties. In this case, we own the bulk of the property uh, that it abuts, uh, meaning Fort Williams Park. The town owns it. And, uh, you know, the, the other section down below there, you know, we, we will, as we always do, same with short road pathway, we'll work very closely with the residents uh, for the one or two properties that are along there. So is, is there, a, other than pointing out the inconsistencies, is no, no willingness to modify the... No, okay. So I guess... Uh, if there are no other points of view or no further discussion. I, mean, I guess uh, I, in the same vein that Caitlin's concerned, I, I want to be clear what we're voting on. Are we voting to approve an allocation up, up to 107000 the, the motion is up to $107,000, and we would take that as, as a, as a uh, direction to go get the project done. And we, not, not to exceed? Not to exceed 107,000. And, and, and let, let me say this: sometimes, if you know, if, if we're not going to have another shore road path that's going to go way over, uh, that went over 65,000. Uh, in, in this instance, you know, it's much, it's much more defined. You know, if it ends up costing a couple thousand dollars more, we would take it out of the sidewalk account or the roadway drainage account. But you know, if, but you know, my understanding is keep it under 107. You know, if it gets above 112, you're going to see it again. Okay. Jessica. I move we approve item 88. Uh, the, I'm sorry. Has been yeah, we're all set with that. Okay. But, except that there was some wording not to exceed that Jamie presented. So is that acceptable to the original? I think I made the original made motion, the original and was second. if I didn't say it, that's certainly my intent, so I would accept that amendment. You would accept yeah. that, and second, seconded? I'll second. Okay. Yeah. Frank ex is seconded that motion, right? Yes, I did. Just so to clarify, that. is this not to exceed 107000 from the unallocated general fund balance? That's what I believe. <laughs> which, yes. which is For not to say that if we cost another 5000 we couldn't take it out of the existing sidewalk fund or the, the roadway right. drainage account. Is that my understanding clear? The way I understand it, it's specific to the unallocated general fund. That, that's the way the motion is. Yeah, I, uh, I'm fine with and, that. And that, that needs to be capped. It's very important that that be capped. Okay. So, are we all set? Yeah. Great. Um, before we close the discussion, if you read the agenda prior to a meeting and you find that there's an issue like this, there, th these things can be taken and dealt with prior to a meeting. Um, so in this situation, I would just implore all of you to read those agendas ahead of time. And if there's a particular issue, reach out for me or reach out for Michael. Because you know we certainly, you know, maybe we could have taken this off the agenda or gone to a workshop or something with it that could have um, brought some of the issues forward that you, you present, and rightly so. so. All those in favor? All those opposed? It's unanimous. And item number 89, the proposed ordinance committee review of vendor sales at Fort Williams Park. Do I have a motion? Yes, Kathy. Um, yeah, I move that the ordinance committee be charged with reviewing ordinance issues relating to supervision of vendor locations at Fort Williams Park 
including participation from representatives of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Do I have a second? Yes, I'll Jessica. Second. second. Have any discussion? I, I'm just wondering what the genesis of this is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> within Fort Williams, we have uh, vendors uh, that are selling uh, food, and other communities have had issues with vendors selling other things uh, on the streets and at other places. And there's, there's reason to believe that this is, is an issue that could crop up at Fort Williams Park, and we'd like to get some legal advice reviewed by the Ordinance Committee to see if we ought to have some standards as to where those types of things may be allowed. Uh, or not allowed in the future. So, so does that mean, for example, or is, the, is it contemplated that a food truck might show up and park in the parking lot at Fort Williams and how we would deal with that? It's, it's, a, it's food trucks and it's, it's street artists. Street artists? People that oh. sell works of art. Okay. okay. So this is, this is for the ordinance community to, to think about uh, restrictions that should be imposed. It's not the Ordinance Committee maintaining an ongoing oversight. Right. That's right. The Ordinance Committee right. would work with Tom Leahy and report back to the Council. Okay. okay. Yeah. Just, just to be Jamie. clear, it wouldn't be just limited to food trucks or street artists. I suppose it would also include people selling Chinese toys or vendor, anything, any vendors. Vendor sales and vendor locations. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that clarify that for you, Dave? Yes. Any further comments? All those in favor? All those opposed? Unanimous. We come to the last item on our agenda, and that's the second opportunity for citizens to discuss items with the town council that are not on today's agenda. Is there anybody who wishes to speak to us? Just if you would. Uh, just before Dr. Prem comes up, I did want to, oh, he can come up but while you're coming up. I just wanted to remind the council, Greg Marles is here still. One of the reasons is, is after the, at the end of the meeting, I want to go over with the council showing you the plans for possibly <coughs> this dais and just want to remind you that was in my written notes but I didn't I didn't mention it aloud earlier so thank you sorry to yes, sir you'd uh, introduce yourself and your address appreciate it hi good evening my name is Eric from I live at 64 Cross Hill Road thank you for this opportunity to meet you guys face to face I um, recently submitted to many of you um, kind of an audio soundscape of issues related to the Spur Week Rod and Gun Club I have a couple of questions. I think, uh, you know, I'm just a father and a pediatrician. I'm not familiar with zoning variances and a lot of the details you guys discuss here. Um, if I could distill my concern to one question, it would be, is the Spurwink Rod and Gun Club allowed to make as much noise as it wants in perpetuity without regulation? I think my neighborhood has serious concerns related to safety. I'm grateful for the people who brought those before you. I live in an area where I'm not in the line of fire, but the noise is incredibly burdensome. Um, I was hoping to get your reaction to that question and also wonder if you might be able to help the discussions we've been trying to have with the gun club in a constructive way <clears throat> move along. We as a neighborhood have waited a year for a range evaluation from uh, expert friendly to the gun club, picked by the gun club, and a year later, um, it's not being shared with us. And I don't know how much stock I'd put in it, but I can't tell you because I can't even see it. So maybe you could ask them nicely to show us because we lost a year just waiting for it. But specifically, if I could only ask the council one question, um, are they just allowed to make as much noise as they want forever? Is there no upper limit to it because it's getting louder and louder by the year and I know many of you are parents and if you um, have activities that are dangerous and annoying um, most of you in your homes I assume place limits and right now the gun club has none and it's just getting worse and worse and worse um, all the time but I'm curious to hear your reactions thank you for your time do I sit down now or well, well um, one uh, didn't you just have a meeting with the gun club well a few of us went down there a couple weeks ago and and didn't you agree to share the cost we offered to chip in you know the president of the gun club made it very clear that they have 
the big plans. They seem to be in keeping with NRA type modernization, but asked several times in what on their list of priorities, what acoustics means to them, he couldn't have been clear that that's the least important thing on their list. They want very badly to be a more modern gun club. They have, as far as I can tell, no desire to be a quiet or neighborly gun club. Um, there are engineering solutions to noise abatement issues. Even the NRA range source book, the kind of quote unquote Bible of range development is pretty clear on the point that uh, about neighborhood relations and the use of sound barriers within a quarter mile. Um, that meeting was a source of great frustration, but I was among uh, a group of three or four or five neighbors that did go down to the gun club the other day to where they pointed out what they do and clearly do not plan to do. This is a organization that couldn't be clear that noise reduction is not mm -hmm. any kind of priority at all. Obviously safety comes first, but um, the, it, to my mind, the noise and safety issues uh, run in parallel because the, the amount of firepower on display is, you know, I think shocking. It's not your grandfather's gun club anymore. It sounds like a, like a marine training camp. It's, you know, the routine use of semi-automatic semi weaponry is, you know, as a father, it's hard to listen to. This is not the soundscape I planned for my children to grow up below. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, I think it's, I think it's shameful. So was there or was there not an agreement to oh, share the cost? Well, I think, yeah, we all sound, I'll, sound I, engineer or someone. I anticipate writing a check to these people to chip in um, for a sound engineer. Okay. But I can't, you know, they made it, mis you know, they made it very clear that, um, sound reduction is not a priority. I think he just did that to yeah. throw us a bone. But they're not gonna, they're not gonna do anything. As, as you know, my personal feeling, you know, as you know, they recently uh, uh, required you know, universal NRA membership. And my personal and political sense of the NRA is you don't affiliate with the NRA because you plan on volunteering to restrict something related to gun use and acoustics and their master plan is last on the list. They couldn't have been more clear about that, to my mind. So, um, yes, David. Well, I, I was hoping we could address this gentleman's question. Yeah, about I, know. I just want to, I want to get, I wanted okay. to get the point out about the sound engineer, because that was a discussion and an agreement. But um, Michael addressed the other piece of this that yeah. is important. Yeah, the, the, I think everyone's aware there's a provision in, uh, I'm not sure which title it is because I don't deal with the gun rules all the time, but it's Section 3011, Regulation of Sport Shooting Ranges. Uh, a municipal noise, this is state law, a municipal noise control ordinance may not require or be applied so as to require a sport shooting range to limit or eliminate shooting activities that have occurred on a regular basis at the range prior to the enactment date of this ordinance. Nothing in this, in the next Section 3, nothing in this section limits the ability of a municipality to regulate noise produced by expansion of activity at a sport shooting range. So the challenge is the state preempts us from limiting what's going on on a regular basis. The issue is, is a definition of what is an expansion of activity and, and in trying to, to define what that expansion is and seeing if there was an attempt. We, you, a community could regulate noise produced by expansion of activity at a sport shooting range. And that was my understanding. <laughs> and, uh, you know, initially when I heard about noise complaints from the Cross Hill neighborhood, I thought, well, the Rodden Gun Club is already there. They move in next door to a Rodden Gun Club where they expect. Uh, but what I'm hearing now, uh, and certainly within the last year or so, is that the, the type of noise, I mean, and, uh, who knows whether it's a, a, a new use at the club or not, but it appears to be more severe from, based on what we're hearing from the residents. So I do think that we have to figure out as a council whether we ought to explore that issue because if it's an expansion, it sounds to me like the town can do something. Uh, and I'm not saying we want to put the Rodney Gun Club out of business, uh, but if it's, if it's a significant expansion, I think we need to take a look at that. And, and, the, and we still have the safety issue, and I'm a little baffled by 
I thought there was going to be a move by the Rod and Gun Club to uh, <coughs> make the shooting range safer, uh, and I forgot the expression for the or the term they've talked about a new a no blue sky range something like yes. you're thinking yeah. of that and and it would i think it would be helpful for us to get an update uh, on that issue as well um i i'm a little leery about whether all of this is a town council issue or not but it, it certainly seems like the expanded noise issue uh, could be yes Michael, did you want to say something? Just, just on, on the, the point you just made, David, we, we have received reports, as have the neighbors, from the Spurwick Rod and Gun Club on what they are doing to address some of the safety issues, specifically in relating to berms, relating to fences, relating to increasing, uh, uh, you know, some of this the, the, in order to do the blue sky thing. Uh, no blue sky thing. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, if you look at the citizens' complaints, you know, there's the one, the, the, to me there's two, there's two complaints. There's a lot of them, but it boils down to two. One is assurance of safety, and the other is just plain noise. And, uh, you know, it's noisy. Uh, and the safety issues, the Rod and Gun Club in the last three years, I think, has made more progress than they probably did in the previous 50 in terms of uh, beginning to address some of those issues. Uh, and, you know, and they are, they're continuing to address them, they're continuing to invest, but you know, they indicate they only can produce so much money to, 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 in, you know, to do it, and they're implementing it over several years. But we, that can, we can get a report to you if you'd like. Uh, you know, this wasn't on the agenda tonight, so. Uh, but we do, have, we do have information from the Rod and Gun Club a written report we received several months ago with some of the safety things they were doing and or, doing and or contemplating. Yes, Dave. And I know the neighbors received that as well. Yeah. I, again, I, I was not a huge fan of the council devoting a lot of time to this issue before. I'm not sure where I stand right now, but I think it may be <coughs> worth some time at an upcoming workshop where we could just get an update sure. and then bat around the idea of whether the council ought to be uh, exploring the noise issue and or safety issue yeah. can I so, can I add to my question it, it, just to expand on this the safety issue because I, I simply just don't understand the, the why Cape Elizabeth's um, why regulations related to just firearm use are just as why the attitude is as laissez-faire as it is because the, although the state law does um, talk about preemption there's nothing in that section that says an order, ordinance, rule, or regulation of any political subdivision. Um, it's not prohibited as far as regulation of discharge of firearms, firearms is concerned. So in terms of regulating the discharge of firearms, I think you guys have broad powers. And as a neighbor, part of my concern is that if Falmouth and Scarborough and Cumberland have rules, that Cape Elizabeth is quickly going to become Southern Maine's anything goes shooting range if we're not keeping up with um, modern safety standards and just the, 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 de the degree of semi autic weaponry on display there. So I just don't understand why the rule is so <clears throat> short. You know, if, if I might answer that one, you know, I, I've heard that concern expressed a number of times. And basically, it's those other communities already had regulations in place before the state preemption occurred. Uh, the state pre preemption, uh, when that was put in place, the only you know, regulations Cape Elizabeth had were, were you know, what shotgun only, you, you couldn't fire a rifle in Cape Elizabeth. And, you know, the state preemption, pre, preemption reads, uh, the state intends to occupy and preempt the entire field of legislation concerning the regulation of firearms, components, ammunition, and supplies, except as provided in section three, subsection three, any existing or future order ordinance rule or regulation in this field of any political subdivision of the state is void. And then it goes on to regulation restricted, except as provided in subsection three, uh, no political subdivision of the state, including towns, et cetera, may adopt any order, ordinance, rule, or regulation concerning the sale, purchase, purchase delay, transfer, ownership, use, which is the important word, possession, bearing, transportation, licensing, permitting, registration, taxation, or other matters relating to firearms, components, ammunition, or supplies. The exception is this does not prohibit an order, ordinance, rule, or regulation of a political subdivision, which, with the exception of appropriate civil penalty provisions, conforms exactly 
with any applicable provision of state law or which regulates the discharge of firearms within a jurisdiction. So it, it's a pretty strong preemption. But accepting the regulation of discharge by any political subdivision, I, I take that to mean you guys have fairly broad power no. and ones with the, which the state or county aren't going to exercise. You know, to this state with, you know, we have not received any opinion <laughs> For, that I'm aware of from a legal person. I know one of the counselors, excuse me, Jamie, formally represented you know, uh, the, the association, but I have not seen, and you know, I could be reminded of it, a, a specific legal argument that says where the town has certain rights. That, uh, I, and that's part of what I'm here to ask. Again, I'm just a pediatrician. I'm not familiar with these rules, but my reading is that you know, because you drive into other towns, you see signs, you know, hot, shot, hot, you know, hunting by shotgun only or firearms discharge is prohibited. Well, um, yeah. I, I'd like to, I, if, I, if it's okay, I'd like to wrap this up. We've heard what you've had to say. What I've heard from Councillor Sherman is that we should take this to a workshop and get an update from the manager. And we ought to look at that, that the issue about the possibility that the noise is different Therefore, there is something that could possibly be done. But that's why I want to take it to the next step. I don't think we want to be sitting here tonight for the next hour and a half debating some narrow definition when we're not lawyers. And I, I think that Speak for yourself. is that, <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I think I, I don't really want David or Jamie giving it legal advice or came, Caitlin. Oh, I, I really don't. I, I, most of my days on the farm. No, but I, I really don't think that's, that's prudent at this point. Yeah. I think taking it to a workshop is, is the best approach. I, I, and, I do have one and, question. And I also, I also, we, we also have an administrative issue we need to deal with as to whether you should be weighing in on this conversation at all, having, having represented uh, the Cross Hill group in the first place. And I don't want to have that discussion tonight, but I, I, really, I really believe we need to go to a workshop to have a, a good, good, solid discussion around this with some, some data from either a lawyer or from our town manager or from the gun club as well as from the association. So I, I just, you know, and I don't want to cut anything off here, but I, I do want you to understand that if we were going to be taking this up as a vote or in any way, shape, or form, Jamie, we'd have to be talking about whether, whether you should be, you know, sitting in on the discussion um, based on your representation previously. Um, and, and that's just... That's just me speaking <laughs> from, from my perspective. So, so I'd like to wrap it up since it's not really a, a, a vote here and it's just simply receiving citizen input that we will take this to a, to a workshop. And uh, so, and again, we've got workshops scheduled over the next month. And yeah, one scheduled in June. In June. Okay, and we thank you very much. I can give you the Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'm not down. So move. I'm not down. Second. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Thank you. And I guess, Greg, we have some conversation with you.